Hey, welcome back to Good Guardian Canine Working Dog. My name is Alton. This is a portion of the a longer full-length video from the Dogs That Protect VHS that was recorded some years ago, uh, produced by Robert Bombase. And um, I shared with you the, the section on the American Pitbull Terrier on that on the, from that VHS. And this is the section on there by uh, Mac Harris on the Presa Canario. And so I thought I'd share this with you as well. I'll be doing a, a full-length video documentary on the traditional Presa Canario. So I thought I'd share this as a preview to that until I, until I get completed with that video. And then I'll share that with you. Anyway, enjoy the video. Enjoy your dogs. Take care of yourselves and take care of your families and stay safe. I will see you in my next video. Yeah, for the past uh, three years, I have been involved in the Presa de Perro Canario, canary dogs known for short in the United States. Uh, I, I am not uh, a big time uh, professional breeder in the sense that I only produce one litter per year. And uh, I don't breed like, I don't have a puppy mill. I produce one litter and I breed quality dogs. I do not breed quantity dogs. Uh, the Presa Canario, uh, was uh, brought to this country about five years ago. And uh, I got into it because I wanted my, my Rottweiler, which I had for 11 years, died. And I wanted to get a very rare, imposing looking dog, which is the Presa Canario. I mean, this dog is, in, is more imposing in, in person than in, 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 in pictures. <laughs> Presser Canario, Peridy Presser Canario, or Canary Dog, comes from the Canary Islands. It is of Spanish origin. The islands were actually named after the large dogs found on the islands. Can equal dog. It is a purebred dog recently introduced to the United States, about five years ago. So they are very rare in the United States. There is actually about 50 known dogs, original Presser dogs in the United States. Originally, the dogs were produced from a crossing of mastiffs and bulldogs and the dogs native to the island, one, of, one being the Bardino Majero. It is of a Hispanic origin. These dogs were originally bred for fighting, which is now outlawed, and this attributes to the fiercelessness as a guardian. The body size is about 100 pounds. As a guardian breed, it is most effective for its man's stopping ability. It is incredibly powerful and fearless. It is known for its great devotion to its human family and is known to accept children in the home. This is a dog that will stay at its master's side at all times and is never known to stray. The canary dog is a gentle and affectionate dog that displays great respect for its human family. It serves very well as a guard dog and is generally quite ferocious towards strangers. It is normally very aggressive towards other dogs. This aggressiveness displays its fighting ancestry. Its back is deep and low. The physical description is that of a powerful dog with a very large head. About it, the, the head is as, as powerful as long as it is wide. The stop is very pronounced. 
Mask and nose are generally black. The ears are high set, medium in size, and they are generally cropped. Neck, broad, powerful, and truncated. Some loose skin on the underside is typical. The chest, between front legs, the chest it wo is wide, low, and deep. The tail, high set, thick at the root and tapers to a point. Length reaches the dog's heart. Legs well muscled and strong, heavy boned. The dog is generally cat footed. The toes are not splayed. The coat is usually short and fairly rough. They come in, in uniform colors such as fawn and various colors of brindles. What type of environment does the breed need? Although the Perro de Presa Canary is a, is a large dog, I mean, it requires moderate space. The most ideal uh, environment for the Perro de Presa is a family environment within a home. It loves children and it loves people. It likes to be with people. Uh, what type of care and maintenance does the breed need related to grooming, exercise, etc.? Perro de Presa is, a, is an active dog. It's not a hyper dog. It requires a moderate amount of uh, exercise. Uh, I wouldn't recommend having it in a studio, uh, apartment, and so on. But uh, it does need moderate exercise daily. Now, it's very easy to maintain because it has a very short coat, and it doesn't have an undercoat, and it doesn't shed like most of the other dogs. How does the breed adjust to different influences in its life, such as children, strangers, other dogs? One thing I notice about the Peridepressor, it, uh, even at any age, it adjusts very easily. I've sold dogs that are 12 months old, and within a week, they've adjusted so much and, uh, that people call me back and saying that they, they can't believe the, the, the quick adjustment these dogs have uh, accomplished within a very short time. Uh, they like to be around a family and children, and they do very well in uh, a family environment. Hey, how, how do they do around other dogs? It's generally aggressive towards other animals. And I usually, I generally wouldn't keep two paradepressors together. I mean, you only ask them for trouble. If, if you are around, you can uh, uh, have them play and so on. But uh, generally, you, you, I wouldn't leave them together and, 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 and go to work or something like that. Because they, they will fight. They are very aggressive by nature. How does the dog react to the strangers, basically? It's a very calm dog. Even though it's an aggressive dog, it's not a dog that would attack without thinking. It, it thinks and it can sense uh, when there is uh, something is not right. And it will not hesitate to attack. Uh, it doesn't adjust to strangers very easily. It can be socialized. You can introduce it slowly, but it's not just going to take to a stranger just like that. <coughs> The peridepressor canaria doesn't really have any inherent problems as far as internal or, or external. They, 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 they have a naturally nice coat. I mean, they don't have any skin problems. They don't have any internal problems such as cancer and so on, which most of the dogs suffer from. They don't have any respiratory problems, and they, they do well in both a hot environment and a very cold environment. They can adjust very quickly to the different extremes. They don't have, the only inherent problem that might crop up on any dog over 100 pounds is it's, you have to look for hip dysplasia. And they generally don't have that within the lines. It's at a very low percentage rate. What are some of the differences between the male and female breeds besides the obvious? The, the, the difference is not that much in, in, in the peridepressor because the females grow uh, almost as big as the, the males. The only difference that I've noticed is the head, which is generally, most dogs, the males have a, a larger head than the females. Uh, the females are, are more, uh, it's a calmer dog, it's a more controllable dog. Because the males, for some reason, because of, they're just more aggressive. And they, the females tend to be easier to train. Okay, that brings us to our next question, which is the trainability of the dog. Yeah. Uh, is it easy, difficult? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I have had experience with Rottweilers, German Shepherd, and Dobermans, and other dogs. And personally, it's not a, a biased part on my side, but I personally feel that the Peridepressor is one of the most intelligent dogs out on the market. Uh, my term, I'll use it, it's trainer-friendly. This dog does well in obedience, and it does well in shows. 
It's very easy to train, and it's not very high. It's not a hyper dog. The Peridopressa is known for the gripping dog, and it just didn't get that name just from a default. It does have a very strong jaw, and when, when, when it attacks and so on, it does hold, and it tends to rip. It tears uh, the flesh apart and so on. Uh, the dog is known for, as far as Carl Semenik in his book, uh, for holding uh, the wheels of moving cars and stopping it at a second. And generally, dogs uh, were, were, were killed after that. Just give me some of your general thoughts on this dog as a protection dog. Uh, uh, a protection dog should have three inherent uh, 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 abilities. One is uh, agility, two, fearlessness, and three, intelligence. And the paradepressor possesses all three. It's a very bold, aggressive dog. It's very quick by nature, and it's very easy to train and very smart. What are some of your buyer requirements? What do you require of a buyer that wishes, that wishes to purchase a dog from you? I require that any buyer who wants to buy a paradepressor do a lot of research first. I, one, my main concern is this is a big imposing dog and any buyer should be sure of themselves and be sure of a big aggressive dog before taking it into their home. It, it is not a stubborn dog, it's very easy to train, but it, it, it can be very uh, lethal if it's not uh, handled right. Yeah, I would like to say that I am not a puppy mill and would never be a puppy mill. I only breed one litter per year and I breed uh, quality in versus quantity. I mean, sometimes people call me and say they can get a prairie depressor for $500. And I tell them, go ahead and get that dog. Because I know in the market, there is a lot of band dogs being produced out there, and people are selling them as a prairie depressor. Now, the reason you can tell, I mean, the difference is when that dog is bred, you can see the difference that comes through. A true prairie depressor would always produce a prairie depressor, not a band dog in return. <laughs> We'd like to thank Howard Chirac of Brooklyn, New York, for his help in this breed segment. Thank <laughs> you.